Hello and welcome to this Bioprocess International Ask the Expert webcast. I'm your host, Leah Rosen, the online editor for Bioprocess International. Before we get started, just a couple of notes. This webcast is being recorded and will be made available for replay in the multimedia section of our website. We've muted the audio lines, but we welcome you to type in your questions for our speaker in the question answer window on your screen. After the presentation, we will begin the question and answer portion, and I will ask our speaker your questions. Your questions in the question and answer window will only be visible to myself and our speaker. So thank you for joining us today. It is now my pleasure to introduce our speaker, Nuska Shamer from Wushi Aptek. Thank you very much for the introduction. I will speak today about rapid experimental assessment of target tractability, and I will focus on fragmenting DNA encoded library screen-based approaches. Before I start with my short uh, webinar, I would like to clarify some definition at the start. Results from Human Genome Project revealed that human genome consists of approximately 20,000 genes. And as we know, these genes are translated to, into the proteins, and any malfunction in this translation can be associated with many human diseases. Approximately 3,000 genes are considered as a part of so-called druggable genome. This is a set of genes encoding proteins that scientists can predict or modulate using experimental small molecule compounds. Currently, only a few hundred targets are targeted by pharmaceuticals, and this actually means that it's a huge majority of open targets still available out there. But before we target a protein, we have to estimate so-called target tractability, aka ligandability. This is the likelihood of identifying a modulator that interacts effectively with the target or domain. And at the end, there is a term, druggability, which means the ability of a protein to bind a drug-like modulator with a therapeutically useful level of affinity, efficacy, and safety. And at this point, actually, then we can speak about promising clinical candidate. How to assess target tractability. The core purpose of experimentally based ligandability assessment is to get an idea at the earliest possible stage as whether the target in question can be effectively modulated by chemical entity with a minimum of uh, committed resources. So historically, this was done with time consuming high throughput screening. Nowadays, Novel methods are available like DNA encoded library screening or fragment screening. In contrast to the classical HDS, which is quite time consuming and also resources intensive, um, the de development of DNA encoded libraries and advanced fragment screening approaches offer many advantages. And the most important advantage is fast target tractability assessment within one to two months. So let us briefly compare both methods. So important to know is that both methods are detecting binding event <clears throat> and that none of them usually produce functional information. That means a readout is simply a binding event without any information on either inhibition or <clears throat> stimulation of the protein. Um, based on the libraries, we can see that, that could, there is a huge difference between both. Fragment screening are only a few thousands of fragments. With their screening, with DNA encoded library, we have a many billion of compounds available. In both cases, we have to perform affinity screening, which in the case of their screening is a simply, let's say, pull-down based screening. And for fragments, we need a highly sensitive biochem uh, biochemical or biophysical methods like MSD, SPR, X-ray, crystallography on NMR. At the end, we need for both methods, biophysical and biochemical orthogonal assays to confirm the hits.
Fragment screening is often applied to difficult targets and especially when other approaches have failed. So what are the basic advantages of fragment-based drug discovery or fragment screen? First is efficient sampling of chemical space with only a couple of thousand of fragments, you can cover a trillion of diverse drug-like molecules. These small fragments are ideally suited to target protein-protein interactions because they found even the smallest crevices on the protein surface. They are excellent predictor of protein ligandability. Uh, low, below, let's say, 0 0.5 or 0 0.3 heat ratio tells us that it will be really very difficult to improve the fragment in a way which will yield, let's say, a um, decent lead compound. Um, another advantage is that they often identify unique binding profiles because they can find hidden pockets. And um, additional, let's say this is kind of a combination of good and bad. Some people say that it's really complicated then to grow the fragments in something useful. So you need a lot of medchem efforts to optimize the fragments. However, at the, during this chemical optimization, you have really a chance to optimize at the same time affinity and physical, physical chemical properties of the compound. And this actually mirrors in the pharmacokinetics profile of the compound. Because the fragments are very small, so we are speaking here about the small organic molecules with the molecular weight below 20 uh, 250 Daltons, we of course need highly sensitive biophysical methods. Um, because of that reason, with the, practically with development of biophysical method, also fragment screen actually really provides uh, an excellent opportunity for a fast tractability assessment of the compounds, uh, excuse me, of the target. So uh, in this case, we always have to count in the fact that you have to use uh, X-ray crystallography, NMR-based methods, SPR or MST. And at the end, of course, you need a team of scientists uh, from biology, biologists, medicinal chemists, biophysics and computational chemists to enable efficient fragment growth. So let us take a look on the workflow of fragment-based drug discovery. So as I already mentioned, we can identify a fragment hit within the month. So how is that possible? At the beginning, we need to carefully tender fragment libraries, which can be either commercial or customized. We actually need high quality protein, functional proteins. So detailed protein QC is very important. And then we actually use highly sensitive screening methods, as I mentioned before. Uh, at the end, we come out with a bucket list of hits, which we, of course, have to confirm with various or orthogonal methods. And this can be, again, biophysical methods, or sometimes people decide even for biochemical methods. In the last step, we have to dedicate quite some time to fragment development, which can be fragment growth, fragment linking, merging or scaffold, for, uh, scaffold hopping, and very often <clears throat> computational chemists are using machine learning to guide the design. Here is just a quick glimpse on our case study of STINK. So we were able to identify a series of fragment hits within a month. We have started with over 2,200 fragments which we have analyzed uh, practically within eight hours using so-called TRIC-based primary screen. So TRIC uh, actually it, um, identifies the binding event based on the fluorescent change, which actually occurs upon um, applying the thermal gradient. Then, of course, based on the set of hits at a single dose, we validated the hits in the full dose response in about 8 to 12 concentrations.
with those heats, then we actually went further into heat conformation using three orthogonal methods, SPR and nano DSF. And for ultimate proof of interaction between the fragment and the target, we also applied NMR and crystallography. Here's a quick summary. Out of 2,200 2, fragments and four orthogonal assays, we have identified 80 binders in the range of 20 to 500 micromolar affinity, and nine out of 11 top hits were also confirmed in ligand observed NMR. This is now just a brief example how one can tackle challenging target as Sting was. Another approach is possible approach is, of course, del screening. And del screening enables searching of the binder to the target protein from the collection of several billions of compounds, which are actually pulled together and collected in a single appender tube. So this is screening on an unprecedented scale. Um, so what we can do with this method? So we, again, we sample very efficiently chemical space. For example, Wuxi Aptex the libraries cover about 70% of drug-like chemical space. DNA encoded library screens are very are suited for challenging targets and also traditional targets. Shown an example for RIP1 where you can see a great similarity between del hit and the clinical candidate. An additional advantage of this um, method is that you don't need tedious assay development. You can apply multiple parallel and customized conditions for specific selection needs, and only micrograms of protein are needed to screen billions of compounds. For example, you can perform a full DNA encoded library screen with about 100 to 200 micrograms of protein, which is, of course, very relevant if you are dealing with a target which is difficult to be expressed. So how the workflow looks like? First, the most Time-consuming part is, of course, library production. Here you can see basic principles. We are building this up as a Lego. You can see you have first building block, you add a code describing this building block, then we add a second building block. We encode this recipe again in the DNA barcode, and so we can actually repeat several cycles. Usually we use two to four cycles libraries and the recipe of the compound is hidden in the DNA barcode. In the next step, we go to affinity selection, which I have mentioned is very similar to a pull-down assay. And then if this everything goes well, we send the samples to sequencing and decoding, and our uh, computational chemists then translate the DNA barcodes into the structures and select the most promising hit candidates. Uh, next, of course, we have to validate obtained hits. So which option do we have in their screening? At Wuxi, we offer three different options. First is full service Dell. This is so-called Dell Pro, which is full professional service with standardized workflow, customized study design, target exclusivity, and limited information disclosure. On the other hand, we offer two kits, so-called Dell Open and Dell Light Kit, which is self-serve Dell. This means that practically you can purchase or apply for these kits, and you can perform the selection at your pace in your laboratory without disclosing the target. Uh, as a counterpart, of course, then you get a larger data set disclosure. We, you have very flexible downstream workflow, and this is actually an excellent early access with reduced risk, especially for the target tractability uh, assessment. And for in this case, uh, the light kit is actually a good choice. So I have mentioned that Wuxi libraries are actually covering about 70% of drug-like chemical space. So how 
this look like, how many libraries we have. At the moment, we have over 280 libraries covering over 65 billion of compounds, uh, uh, practically spread over four different products. Um, our largest library connection is hidden in Dell Pro package with 174 libraries. Then we have Dell Lite with 58 libraries, Covalent libraries as a special offer with 50 plus libraries, and Dell Open for Academia with 27 libraries. Dell Open kits were launched in 2018 and they target academia so that they can practically uh, apply uh, this cutting edge technology in very early stage of the investigation and also to see if their um, target is tractable. For the biotech and pharma industry, we offer the light, which was uh, launched in September 2019 with a similar concept as the open. To get the most out of your Dell Light affinity data, you can use this data in machine learning. Machine learning, we perform machine learning in the close collaboration with Schrodinger. So you can, can discuss with the Schrodinger how what kind of needs you have, what kind of structural activity relationship you are interested in, and then the Schrodinger will work closely with you. So how that actually works. So I already mentioned, you take your Dell data, they will go into deep learning, they will predict the structures, physical chemical properties, and they will take a look on commercial catalogs. Here, one example, how this might work also for you. In the house, we have performed Aurora A case study, where we actually obtain about 5% hit rate after this machine learning step. So um, you might wonder why the affinity of uh, practically the hits from machine learning is so poor. The reason is very simple. We have based on the Dell screening results, we wanted to find actually a smaller molecules, which are then let's say more, which offer more opportunities for further development in med medicinal chemistry. So our colleagues they said, okay, we want to have some structured with the smaller molecular weights. And based on the machine learning, we have identified quite some scaffolds, unique scaffolds, which target Aurora, <clears throat> Aurora A. I hope that I was able to persuade you that practically you can use either fragment screen or DNA encoded libraries to rapidly assess, exper um, rapidly experimentally assess target tractability. The fragment screen is suitable for challenging targets, enables efficient sampling of chemical space and identification of unique binding sites. Of course, you have to take some time into consideration for further med medicinal chemical efforts to um, make the fragment grow. With the DEL screening, you can screen an unprecedented scale where billions of molecules are generated and you can screen them through a simple biophysical affinity assay. Importantly to point out, the molecules which come out of Dell screen are already very drug-like and they can be immediately used as a tool compound to further validate your target of interest. And if you combine Dell with machine learning, this actually facilitates cost-effective lead-like heat discovery. And at the end, I would like to point out that Wuxi Aptex platform HITS provides one-step solution for clients seeking support for the target to hit phase. And we offer fragment and their screen um, at the same time. Thank you for your attention. In the case that you would like to obtain more information, please 
feel free to contact us on the email shown on the screen. Thank you. Thanks, Nusha. So how we've got a few questions. Um, and we just have a little bit of time for questions here. So how can we decide which method is the best confirmation method after the primary screen in FBDD? So, um, yeah, uh, <laughs> um, usually uh, for, for the primary screen, it actually, it's uh, the, 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 the target actually determines which method is used next. So uh, usually we actually start the uh, optimization for or of at least two methods in parallel. And then one method, usually MSC or SPR, is used for the primary screen. And then the second method is then used for uh, hit, uh, practically for the confirmation. OK. And what's the requirements for targets if we want to use Dell to do the screen? And how do we deal with the DNA binding target? Mm -hmm. So um, if you want to use Dell, practically, uh, if you want to perform Dell screen, you need only small amounts of the protein. So as I mentioned before, with about 200 micrograms, we can already uh, complete the screening. The target has to be highly pure or as pure as possible, because, I mean, this is this famous sentence, uh, garbage in, garbage out. So the protein quality is really important. Uh, because of that reason, we are investing quite some time in so-called pre-selection tests where we carefully characterize the protein and only if the protein is really fully functional, uh, does not aggregate, behaves well, then of course we continue in the screening. And the same is true also for DNA binding proteins. We have uh, several tricks how we can deal with these proteins so that they do not interact with our, let's say, uh, DNA barcode and we can also successfully find the hits for either DNA or RNA binding proteins. Okay, so it looks like we have time for just one more question. If we didn't get to your question, we will be taking those questions and passing them directly on to Nushka, and she can follow up with you. So the last question is, can we screen RNA targets via DEL or FBDD? And what's the requirement for RNA targets? Um, yes, uh, we can screen those two, of course, and depending on the target, we, um, so to say, when we know what the target is, then we, of course, apply a special criteria which have to be met for those targets. So in that case, we work really, very closely with the client, even before the screen, to practically to get the targets prepared in the best possible manner. Okay, great. Well, thank you very much, Nushka. Thank you. And thanks to our audience for joining us. The recorded version of this webcast will be available for on-demand viewing on our website. And as a registered attendee, you'll receive a follow-up email providing you with a direct link. We look forward to having you join us at future Bioprocess International Ask the Expert webcast. Look for those announcements in your inbox. Goodbye. Goodbye.